now recognize ranking member Stauber uh, for five minutes of questions. Ranking member. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and, and thanks to all the witnesses for bringing your expert testimony. Uh, we all do really appreciate it. A uh, couple of uh, quick questions. Um, uh, Mr. Stunts, how would removing all decommissioned pipelines impact local uh, species? Well, thank you, Congressman. Uh, our, we certainly would support proper decommissioning in the terms of uh, proper plugging of the well and flushing of the pipes and that sort of thing. But the structure scientifically is what we're concerned with as scientists because over decades of time, those have developed flourishing ecosystems. In fact, sometimes some it's you know very rare corals and those sort of things. And so we we have issues now. You know we we didn't anticipate that level of fisheries production or or the ecosystems thriving like that when these structures went in. Now we have sort of the scientific issue of well, what do we do because they occur? They're the only structured habitat available. So essentially, you you just remove that habitat. So somehow offsetting that or doing the proper studies to ensure that, you know, this material won't last forever and, and the marine life builds upon it. And so our science has shown that by leaving that in the water, you can even enhance, but at least maintain the fisheries productivity that you have. And there's a lot of fisheries concerns that if you remove that habitat, you'll begin to deplete the sustainability of, of our current fishery situation. Thank you very much for that answer. Uh, Mr. Bosch, you, you're uh, very well versed, um, 30 years. In your time uh, evaluating the industry, has the technology become better and safer as we uh, drill for oil? Yeah, surely, uh, and it tends to, tends to respond to disasters. So I, I, when I was on the Oil Spill Commission, we emphasized the need to improve the safety technologies inspection, and that certainly has been done. One of the challenges, though, is that this older infrastructure is not operating in the same standards and with the same capacity of those of the major oil companies that have to do that. So, for example, when I noted that they detected this methane being leaked, they didn't detect it from the offshore, the new offshore deep water platforms, which have all the right technology. It's in the older, older infrastructure that they're seeing this. Yeah. I think that I think that uh, Mr. Bosch, it, it, that parallels my line of thinking with the mining industry, uh, where there have been sins of the past, and, I've, and we readily admit that across this nation, but we're getting better and better and better at it and, and safer and safer and safer with the technology. I, I appreciate that. Um, Mr. Schuerk, I think that I uh, pronounced that uh, correct. Thank you for your testimony. Can you tell us where your nonprofit is headquartered at? Um, our, non our nonprofit is a 501c3 uh, headquartered in New York City. In where? New York City. Okay. Um, when you when you track carbon, uh, um, do you look at donors to your group, such as um, bill, billionaire Michael Bloomberg? He's a he, he's a funder of your nonprofit. Is that correct? We have, we have, we are funded by a number of philanthropies, uh, yeah, yeah. including no, I, Mr. Schwark, I asked you a question: Is is billionaire Michael Bloomberg a funder of your nonprofit? Bloomberg Philanthropies is. Yes. Okay. So the answer is yes. Thank you. Um, and and do you monitor uh, uh, his carbon and his private jet? Well, in, in what I was going to say in terms of carbon tracking is somewhat a misnomer. What we look at uh, are the are the financial implications of the energy transition, particularly for you, oil and gas companies. Mr. Schwartz, do you, does your nonprofit intend to hold uh, your funders accountable as well as the oil and gas industry? Well, what we do is produce research that's focused on the financial implications of the energy transition, rather than uh, holding. Uh, different individuals or funders or anyone for that matter accountable. Okay, so I, I would just ask this as, as, as we go forward. The, the, uh, I would like you to understand northern Minnesota, for example. We have winters and the north part of the country, uh, I, I would say, would be uh, like this. When it's 30 or 40 below for weeks at a time, meaning you, you can throw water in the air 
and it will uh, become ice before it hits the ground. I need to turn on my heater and get instant heat for our families, my family and others. Do you support that? Yes, in fact, uh, I didn't come to testify on this, but many of my colleagues look into issues about intermittency and how uh, renewable energy will be able to address those in the future. I, I'm glad you support uh, the, the warmth that the northern climate uh, folks need. I appreciate that. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your testimony. And back to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ranking Member.